Welcome all you guitar nerds out there. This is a story of a very nice but poorly tinkered Pro Reverb from the 60s. In this video you will see how I bring it back to original conditions. There are tons of information about this amp in the internet, but let's find out when this amp was manufactured. Here's the stamp on the tube chart that says 01, and that points to September 1965. Here you can see uh, the ink stamp inside the chassis, the 38th week of 1965, again in September. Here's the date code on the choke, 606 means shoemaker, 5 dash 13 it's again 13th week in 1965 and finally the stamped chassis serial number A00899 which also points to 1965 all right let's take a look inside the cabinet here we see the tube chart and the rectifier tube uh, GC 34 two fender labeled output tube 6L6 and a bunch of different labeled preamp tubes like Ultron which is made in Germany Ruby tubes uh, S brand made in Russia and a valvo also made in Germany. Uh, this amp has two Utah speakers. And wow, look look at the speaker terminal. It's a real mess, but yeah, I'll take care of that later. Well when you find something like this, uh, when you do the first inspection and that always makes you think ooh what's coming next well this is coming next this preamp tube is definitely not a vacuum tube anymore the milky color says loud and clear that uh, this tube is leaky. Let's get to work and see what's under the hood. We take a look inside the dog house. Ta -da. And yes, somebody definitely was in here before and changed out two filter capacitors. By the way, he took the wrong value instead of 70 microfarad, he dropped in 200 microfarad capacitors. The original capacitors that he left in place bulge out and you can see some yellow gunk in the center creeping out so the caps are definitely leaky they have to go let's take a look at the chassis and the guts where the knobs and the faceplate show somewhere and to be honest, I like it when a vintage amp looks vintage, and this one really does. The tinkerer who was working in this amp before attacked in this artificial center tap. Not really a good job. And although 
and he installed a three-prong cord. He left the ground lift and the death cap in place. Um, the safety wire was stripped and stuffed under a washer. Not really a safe way to do it. And he left the receptacle in the circuit. This is something that I will remove too. Look at this disk capacitor. This poor sucker spilled out his guts. The bypass capacitors, the blue ones you can see here, are changed out, but with the wrong value. They have 47 microfarad instead of 25. And this is a fun one. There's one capacitor flopping in the breeze. Not good solar joint either. Here are the tube sockets. Um, at least they are untouched and in original conditions. So let's turn it around and see what we find on the other side of the chassis. Well, some of the parts are original, but uh, look at this. Um, the volume part of the vibrato channel is uh, definitely not or original and it's uh, sold a very poor. I have to change that off and take a good one, a CTS or something like this. What a soldier job, man. All right, here's the bias circuit, and here's another very old capacitor that has to get a retired too. The Power transformer is not original, it's a replacement for 220 volts, which is a good idea when you live in Europe. And again, the center tab is sold in very poorly. Um, I have to take care of that as well. Let's go. By the way, on the left side of the chassis, you can see the rewired power cord on the receptacle, the death cap and the ground switch is uh, out of circuit. Yep, here's a piece of the old transformer. Well, for this purpose you need a powerful solder iron to heat up the chassis properly. Otherwise you end up with bad connections and that can cause any kind of trouble. And here it is, my Godzilla iron. Yeah, that's much better. Time for the next step. I took out the funny replacement volume part and found this professional ground connection. And this is how it looks like after I swept in a nice CTS part. Now it's time to take care of the doghouse, remove all the old capacitors, yeah, 
they have to get out. And that looks much better. Brand new, ready for the next 40 years. Here's the new capacitor for the BIOS circuit. Another problem are always the crispy toasted screen resistors because they are mounted directly to the tube sockets of the power tubes, get very hot. And you see we have instead of 470 ohms, 598. That's too high, too crispy. Goodbye. I replaced them with period correct carbon resistors with the right value. By the way, all resistors and the blue molded caps tested good wear in spec, so I gladly left them in place because it's part of the sound of these amps. All the crappy bypass caps are gone. The new ones have the right value of 25 microfarad. Alright, now it's time to check the tubes. Is one of the preamp tubes in my tube tester. The first triode is checking mm, quite good. But look at this. The second triode shows a short. See the little lamp is glowing. And uh, this um, tube has some internal leakage. So it's not a good idea to leave it in place. We need a new one, definitely. Okay, now it's time to check the BIOS. BIOS probes are installed and connected to two amp meters. The BIOS is 35 and 33 milliamps at idle, so it's uh, pretty moderate, not really hot, good enough. Now it's time to listen to the Reborn Pro Reverb from 1965. So I hope you enjoyed the service on this amp as much as I did. See you the next time.